<laughs> you were going to hold that post for I, I could hold this the whole hour. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I was, I was thinking immediately, I was regretting the decision to copy you. Cause I was like, what if she just doesn't move and she's waiting for me, but you know, she'll eventually be the good leader that she is. And she'll just, just step off with her left it. foot. Just come out of it. Just come out of it. Hi everybody. Hi Lucas. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Getting better. Getting, Getting better. better. Better and better. That's right. I have a, I don't have quite the smooth radio voice I had last week, but we're working on it. Okay. Well, you know, you can't have your radio voice every week. <sighs> Who sang that song, Betty Davis Eyes from the eighties. Do you remember how bad that song was? <laughs> yes. Is that what I have? Do I have Betty Davis eyes right now? No, but when I had all that scratchy voice, I was cracking oh. up. I started singing that song to Maddie and she was like, ugh. Because <laughs> that woman's voice was so raspy. I can't remember her name. Someone watching this right now knows the answer to that. It's probably yes. going to be like Who's Renee. Who sang or... Betty Davis eyes? Um, I don't want to have to be the one to look it up. Kim somebody. Kim Carnes. Did you just look that up or did you know no. that? No, no. Someone from the, from outside the studio sent it to me. <laughs> and there's Wayne in Egypt. Hey, Wayne. Hey, Wayne. What's up? Hola. Wait, are you saying our resident music expert? Yes. Chimed in? Oh. Yes. Producer? We should just call him the producer. The producer? Yes. Yeah. He would, if we call, if we give him a title, he wants payment. All right. We'll just buy more cookies or something. Buy more bourbon. Kim Carnes. Oh, Kim Carnes. Wayne knew it too. That's awesome. Now I'm not saying Miss Carn Carnes had a bad voice. I'm just saying it was watching. It was very raspy, you know. Yes. I remember that. It made an impact on me. Thank I you. I wonder Ms. how Carnes. she sounded when she was sick. I wonder if she sounded normal. I wonder if when <laughs> she was sick, she had like a super clear, clean voice. It could be. Could be. You know, this is, I mean, it, you know, sometimes my brain goes, what am I talking about right now? But we're going to talk about audiobooks today. This is absolutely in line with recording audio. It's all related, <laughs> obviously. obviously. So what's going, so what, what else is going on with you? Have you actually, have you been listening to any audiobooks lately or reading anything cool? Uh, yes. I finished my thriller trilogy and I have to tell you so much, uh, uh, something that, I have to tell you so much, Lucas. <laughs> English. Um, I listened. So the the trilogy I listened to is by an author named Jason Matthews, and the, the I found out about the books because they made a movie, Red Sparrow, and it was a an espionage, a Russian spy thriller trilogy. The books were. So I saw the movie a long time ago. I immediately bought the books, audio books, and then I never listened to them. Hmm. So then when I was sick, I was listening to the audiobooks and I was obsessed. They're like 17 to 20 hours per book, three of them. Oh, wow. And they were so good that I wasn't listening to them fast. Sometimes I'll listen to nonfiction yeah. faster because I feel like get to the point, get to the point, get to the point, get to the point. Right. These books were so delicious. I watched, I listened to them slowly, not one, one, but like one, two, one point two just a little bit faster. That's my favorite speed. Cause otherwise they speak a little too slow cause they're right. enunciating. Anyway, when the trilogy was over, I thought maybe if, if he doesn't have a book yet, then um, I can message him and encourage him to write his next book because these are fantastic. Also when a book is 20 hours narrated, that's a, that's a long, long, long book. There's Tony. Hi, Tony. Hey, Tony, Tony, I haven't given up hope. I just want you to know, and he knows what I'm talking about, that I haven't given up hope that he's going to change his mind about something. So <laughs> just so you know, Tony, every time I see you on Instagram, I'm like, come on, Tony, change your mind. Um, anyway. Tony, there's so much good food waiting on the other side of that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So Lucas knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so when it was done, I thought I'm going to look him up. I'm going to go to his author website. I'm going to subscribe to his email list. And I'm going to encourage him, you know, just little me that he had a movie made out of his fiction. So he needs encouragement for me. But I found out he passed away in 21. Oh, no. So those are the only three books. Wow. That he will have come out. He's a former CIA off operative officer. 
Was and he older? Wife, yeah, he was retired from the CIA. Mm. So um, he wasn't old enough to die, right? I mean, right. he wasn't 100 or 150. But anyway, I was very sad about that. It's like, oh, so yeah. because when you find an author that does a really good job and they have really good books and then you want to go, it's part of one of the things that we talk about, right? It's like yep. you wrote monetize your book with a course and then now you have course pricing strategies. And so we're like, hit me again, Lucas, what's next? What else do you have? <laughs> right. So anyway, so that's what I finished. And then John Stonge recommended a book that I messaged him about this morning to say, thank you. I'm only maybe five chapters in unreasonable hospitality. Oh, customer service is black and white. Customer experience is colored. Oh, so it's really interesting. It's one of the chapters, something like that. It's just really interesting. It's by a guy who uh, he starts the book by talking about he had a Michelin rated restaurant and he got, they, they go to this, they make it into the top 50 and they go to the dinner mm -hmm. and they announce mm -hmm. everybody from 50 to one in order. And they're like, what are we going to be fourth, fifth, 10th, whatever. And they were 50th the first time they went. And so immediately they were shameful. Like now that's the top 50 restaurants in the world. So just being in the room is a big deal. But if you're 50th out of 50 anywhere, even though there's millions of other people that could be there, you're, you're kind of like looking at your shoes. And so they, they were talking about how they were kind of bowing their heads. And of course, this is the moment when the camera's on them and projecting them up and they're miserable. So they set a goal to do, to be number one, to be a number one Michelin rated restaurant and they made it. So this is all about the process of how you, the saying, um, uh, people will forget what you did or what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Right. So it's like, how do you make people feel? Do you make them feel like you heard them, that, that you were paying attention when they said, I'm unhappy with this, or I'm thrilled with this, or whatever? It's why I'm such a note taker. Even when I'm talking to a, a client, I was just talking to a client right before we did our first thing, and I took two pages of notes, just really listening to what was said, because I want to make sure that he knows that I'm listening when he's talking to me. Um, so it's all about the customer experience, the client yeah. experience, and uh, that's cool. I'm really, really enjoying it. So that's what I that's what I've dipped my toe in right now. How about you? What are you reading? Oh my gosh, um, I have actually had to set. Uh, <laughs> this is such a shameless plug for your book. I love it. <laughs> I had to okay. set my other nonfiction. Yeah, I had to set my other nonfiction aside and open up. <laughs> this is like someone's going to bury me with this book. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully not for a hundred years. <laughs> so the reason I say that is I'm in the middle of, um, of I, had, I launched a book a week ago, a fiction book. So being sick, launching a fiction publication, doing all the things I was just like straight up in marketing, like full on marketing mode for both yeah. books at the same time. Right. Crazy. And you so, are a crazy person. I'm saying you all are hearing it here first. Yeah. I don't, you know, like, you know, when you, you look at something on paper and you go, yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> and then yes. you go do it. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. All the time. Um, I just looked at my next Thursday. Yeah. yeah I just right. looked at my next Thursday and I went, oh, who signed up for this? Yeah. All of this all in the same day. Yeah. I'm there with, uh, I'm there right now with book marketing. So um, I had to get around some some mental barriers with the marketing strategies I had for both books. So nonfiction, I've been, I've been back in, you must market your book pretty heavily this last two weeks. And I've been accompanying that with some coursework on uh, Mark Dawson's ads for authors program. Okay. Yep. So I've been in like full on book marketing, but like almost to the point where you're like up to here, like with book marketing and I'm uh -huh. like, don't want to think about it or do it anymore, but got to keep hit and send. I'm there. I'm there right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I, feel I don't want to let these comments go by that uh, were time sensitive. Helen was talking about your 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 discussion about um, um, making the customer experience. So, 
Yeah. Wow. Helen, Helen, you're great with that, by the way. You're, you're so good with people in your circle. Um, and then she had asked me, what's next, Lucas? And I know she was doing that being sarcastic. <laughs> no, because we know you. We know you. And we know that you are. Um, crazy, as we just established. Uh, yeah. Yes, that you are crazy and that you are going to probably announce your next book any minute. <laughs> but, but, but have you have you settled on a nonfiction title? Um, it's it's about course marketing strategy. So right now that's my tentative title for my next nonfiction book is ah. it's going to be about course marketing. Okay. Um, but I get into some tactics. So that's the only reason I'm a bit hesitant to fully adopt the the title right now. But that's my tentative title for it right now. All right. Well. A good type and, of and and then like next week, two weeks later. No, no. February, March. What I know you said maybe like yeah. two two a year. So what's the cadence? Yeah. Is it six months from September? So February. Yeah, I like a spring launch. Um, my next, spring my next launch and a fall launch. To yes, go with the it... colors. <laughs> to go with the colors. That's right. It's my outfits. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a my next fiction book, which is a full novel. So I'm giving giving some weight to that amount of work um, is going to be out in January. So the earliest I'll publish the next nonfiction book will be February, but it'll be somewhere February, March. OK, have you not done the production schedule for it? Not yet. Um, I'm still working the outline, too. So. But. You know, I really liked putting a book out in February this year. Yeah. I thought it was a, great... a great cadence. That's a great cadence. I think that's probably what I'll adopt for my fiction. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Although Tanya Kappas, my Southern cozy mystery hero, publishes one book every month, one 50,000 word cozy mystery every single month of the year. That's and she a, does. She has um, Patreon. She has in-person events for her readers. She sends out birthday cards to her Patreon subscribers. I mean, she is a she is a beast, and she's so nice. She's so nice. We've connected on a personal level, and um, she just uh, is my hero in this space. Yeah, she really <laughs> is. I'll never slow down. <laughs> this is Frank Pierce. He was a commander in the Coast Guard with me. Okay. Hi, Frank. And, Thank you for your service. Uh, great guy. Really nice guy. Great thinker. Like, you know, just, a, just a, a fun dude to sit down and have a beer with and talk about all the problems and solve things. He's a great problem solver. Um, he's somewhere on the West Coast doing yeah. West Coast things right now. West Coast Thanks, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know that that schedule, that monthly production schedule, um, is so good. Uh, but you've got to. I've I've come to realize just in this little short period of time I've been playing in the fiction writing world that there's so much more back and forth with my fiction than there is with my nonfiction. In the editing, oh, because process. you're working with a coach on that. Yeah, that and the editing, like the developmental edits, to me are so much more intense with the fiction. Um, mm. Because with the nonfiction, you, you think? Well, I think with nonfiction, you're you're you have a, a certain amount of expertise, and if you're writing a book about that expertise, you usually yeah. just like you pow, usually pow, pow. know what you're talking about. Oh man, you're just rolling. Yeah. Okay. With fiction, okay. I feel like I'm making a world, and there's mm -hmm. so many opportunities for it to be better. Mm. Okay. Could I whip? Could I whip one out every month? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Would it be as good as it would be if I'm wasn't doing the process I'm doing with Zach? No, right. it wouldn't be. All right. But my goal is to get there. I would love to be able to put out a fiction book, 50,000 words every month. Well, I, I think that that's in, entirely possible. And I've listened to enough of Tanya. And then when we've talked um, br briefly, um, she has shared her process. She's very transparent about her process. She's been doing it for 12 or 13 years. And she just writes 5,000 words every day. Yeah. And she said, and I still love it as much today as I did when I first started. 5,000 words is a lot. It That's is a lot. 30,000 words in a six-day week. 
And so she's ahead by books because her books right. are 50,000 words. So she's creating more content than one book a month, but then she has a process for like, once the book is done, she flips it off to someone else. And she has such an interesting philosophy. I know we are um, talking about audiobooks today, but I thought this was really interesting and I, I'm wired the same way is she doesn't do things if they don't fit with her purpose. She said, right. my purpose for being on earth is to, is to entertain readers. That's my purpose. And in order for me to entertain readers, I need to write books. So for a while, she would like say, everyone would say, oh, you need to write a book about how you're writing these books and how you're so prolific. Mm -hmm. And, and she entertained it. And then she was like, nope. Hmm. And she had a Patreon for a minute for authors because she thought, well, maybe I could help authors to be better authors, more prolific and those sorts of things. And she said, I, I hated it within two minutes and it took me away from my purpose, which was entertaining readers. And so she's like, I refunded everybody's money and stopped doing it. That's the way to do it. And she's got a couple of things optioned for film or television or whatever. And they're like, well, we want this or we want that. And she's like, no. She's like, that's not my purpose. And she's like, I'm fine. I'm happy with everything I'm doing, whether this happens or it doesn't happen. She's like, I'm, I've got my purpose and I'm on my purpose. And mm -hmm. I thought that is so, that's so me too, because if someone is saying, well, you should do this or you should do that. I go, does it fit with me? Is it elf? Right. Is yep. it what we talk about in EBM? Is it elf easy, lucrative, fast and fun? And is it going to bring me joy? Am I going to be in the triangle of awesomeness? Right. Mm -hmm. Am I going to, is it time, money, and joy factoring in? And so it was really, it was really cool just to hear someone else articulate my thought process on it. I, I love it. Um, I, it just shows you how much she, she knows about herself and her discipline to yeah. be able to stick with that. Um, you know, what's cool about that is she, she, um, I'm, I don't want to speak for her. Obviously I've never met her. <laughs> But probably a good, probably a good statement. Yeah. I'm assuming that a lot of that confidence and clarity comes through finding success at what she loved to do, right? Like yeah. she loves doing something and it worked. And she said, This is the best of both worlds, right? Like and yeah. so it, it gives yeah. you the freedom to be able to say, you know, I really don't have to worry about that Patreon account because I'm not over here trying to, you know, figure no. out how to pay for the dinner no. tonight. No. No. That's good for her. She just loves writing. And she says, I love writing. I love, I write 5,000 words every morning. And then in the afternoon I do admin stuff and she's very consistent. And you know, I, you know, I, oh yeah, I'm a sucker for consistency. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I, a blessing. <laughs> and I understand the power of consistency. I think a lot of people, they want the, you know, the freedom and all that stuff. And then they go, well, now I've had a month of freedom and now I'm freaking out because I don't have finances and mm -hmm. they missed, they missed out on putting the things in place so that the money would still come while they were enjoying their freedom. And so in order to get off of that roller coaster, you have to have the power of consistency on your side. But when you do have it, your momentum carries you through, but you can't have it both ways. You can't go, well, I want that over there, but I'm not willing to do what it takes to work to, to right. work to get myself there. And I'm working with a client right now and he talks about the suck in his book. Hmm. So he's like, by, by anyone's standards, he's a total baller, right? Owns hmm. multiple companies, has an eight figure business, just setting the world on fire. And, and he talks about in his book, how he was like, I was in it. I was just in it for a really long time. And it's like, you have to get comfortable with the fact that success comes from putting in the work every day. Yep. He's like discipline. It's like Jocko says, discipline equals freedom. You are only right. going to have as much freedom as you have discipline and you can't dabble. It's okay. not dabble equals freedom. It's discipline equals freedom. That's right. And anytime I've ever dabbled when I was wondering why the dabbling wasn't paying off, I had to look at the fact that it was dabbling. <laughs> Right. And if you start to measure, I mean, this is where like I do, I do a consistency. It's like how, you know, where am I consistency wise mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, my goal is to do five of these and five of these and five of these and five of these every single day. So if I get to Friday and I've checked all my boxes, it's no surprise to me that I get the end results that I want. 
Right. But if I intended to do five and I did four or I did three or I did none, it's no surprise that I don't get the results that I want. And so it's really consistency and then striving for excellence, right. you know, not making do, but really saying I'm not going to settle for less than the best than it can possibly be, even if I have to wait a little longer in order to get that end result. So, well, it, you know, it may not seem on its surface that it's related to today's audiobook topic, but it absolutely is because to oh, me, yeah. the audiobook is an additional layer, right? And so if you, if you go into writing a book, I mean, we're so consumed with the writing process and then publishing and then getting the book launched and marketed. And, yep. Um, I'm looking at book one of my fiction series coming up and I'm saying, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting this audio book produced before my launch. Like I didn't do that with the novella because I didn't want to force it, but I also needed to experience publishing fiction for the first time. And, you know, having, having published nonfiction, I was smart enough to go, let's just, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it can yeah. be wildly different. Yeah. Um, but then as soon as I got in, I was like, okay. Um, I definitely want to put these pieces in place because it is right. one way to leverage that, um, that work right. in, in a better way, but it does take that consistent disciplined approach to, to production before launch to have that even be a possibility, or you're yeah. going to end up like I am trying to catch up on the nonfiction side with those. Mm. Yeah, I think audiobooks are the fastest growing, or I know audiobooks are the fastest growing segment of right. publishing and having audiobooks is really helpful. I know for me, John Stonge recommended a book. The first thing I did was use one of my billions of Audible credits because I'm on the buy two a month plan and sometimes I get up to 10. Well, now I'm back down to one because I found a whole bunch of books that I wanted to buy. Mm -hmm. And, but the first thing I'm doing is listening to the book. I can already tell a few chapters in that this is going to be a book I'm going to want to get in physical form and there I'm going to want to highlight it and make an action plan from it because, um, unreasonable hospitality sounds like a great thing for me to integrate into everything that I do, because everything that I do, it has a high level of expectation for the mm -hmm. people who send me their money. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So um, I, I love that. Um, do we want to talk about um, the different ways to think about having an audiobook and the different ways to publish an audiobook? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I just went through this process and I was actually calling you for a lot of advice in the process. Um, you and Zach both. I was like, hey, you know, difference between recording it myself, hiring someone to to yeah. to record it. Um, I, I chose to to narrate my own nonfiction, but definitely outsourced my narration for my yep. fiction. Yep. Um, using ACX for both. Mm, excellent. Right? excellent. Um, so for those that aren't familiar, uh, ACX is Amazon's audiobook um, mm -hmm. publishing service, but it's not exclusive to Amazon, although you can be exclusive to ACX. Uh, ACX publishes to iTunes. They publish mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, uh, Audible, and there's one other big one that they publish. Find voices. Oh, you're you're talking about that they publish too. Yeah, ACX goes to to three large platforms. One of them's Audible. One of them's iTunes. And I'm trying to remember what the third one is. I'm not. It's not coming to me either. But um, let's. I've there's so it. much to talk about when it comes to um, Audible. I thought I would talk about it in the order in which I experienced audio. Oh, yeah. Um, so the first audiobooks I did were 50 50. So with so if you have no budget for an audio and and I'm and I'm gonna say this with all the kindness in the world, you don't have a posh British accent or a voice that's pleasing to listen to, <laughs> you will want a professional voice person to do your book. Now there's this the school of thought that people like to hear the author read the book, but I have more times than not had people say, the narrator makes all the difference. And if the person's voice is not pleasing to listen to, then people will not keep your audiobook. They right. might sample it. They might even buy it, but they're going to return it. If it's not pleasing to listen to, they don't mm -hmm. want to listen to it. So right. that's something to consider. And it's something to just have awareness about um, mm -hmm. yourself. Um, having said that, if you do narrate it yourself, you have to have some professional quality that's right. 
Um, you have to have professional production and editing and all of those things. The good news is that while you can do a crappy book cover and not edit your book properly and just throw it up on Amazon, which for the millionth time, I advise against that. Right. Um, ACX has quality requirements. So you can't put up a crappy book. You can put up a, a book, a, a good audio, a good book that's produced effectively. But if you don't have a great voice, you're still going to not get great results. But at least you have to have the sound. It has to sound good to the right. listener, right? All that to say is they have sound requirements and they will kick it back until it meets their sound requirements. That's right. If you if you don't want to narrate it yourself, don't have the ability to narrate it effectively, or don't have a budget, ACX offers the option where you can have narrators audition for your project, and then they will audition for you, and you can agree to do a 50-50 split. The upside is you don't come out of pocket with any cash. The downside is if your book is wildly successful, you have to share your royalties on the audio side 50-50 for seven years with right. your narrator. So there have been cases where nobody wins, the author doesn't win, the narrator doesn't win, the book isn't marketed, the book doesn't sell, so the narrator lost their time, the author you know, gave that away and nobody wins. The upside on it is I know of, of a couple of cases where the narrator took a, ch a chance on the author and the narrator made millions of dollars when it would have cost the author four or $5,000 to have the book produced. Right. But it again, sometimes you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know and you don't know how popular your book is gonna be, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do the 50-50 split for seven years or you can um, audition talent and pay them. So you can right. pay them per finished hour, yep. depending on the narrator, their experience, et cetera, et cetera, it could be $300 a finished hour. It could be $2,000 a finished hour. It just depends or more, right? Um, I know some people have quoted $25,000 to do an audio book that was just a few hours long. So I'm not sure what happened at the end. I'm not sure if they send you roses every month for a year or like what, the, what the upside of that was. I think that's a little um, extreme yeah. Um, considering that it's a pretty homogenized process and, and that sort of thing. So that's what I did at first is at first I did 50, 50 split. Um, I did one person for the miracle, uh, for the successful single mom series. And then I used Rob Actis, who is the narrator for the miracle morning series, because we were friends, we worked together. And so a lot of people were like, why do you have a man narrating your books? And that's just how it worked out. He happened to right. be a professional narrator. He had great equipment. He has a great voice. I really loved his work product, his work ethic. And ultimately, don't we want to do business with our friends, people we know, like, and trust, people that sure. have our backs and all those sorts of things? Yes. Um, so then I made one stop in Albuquerque. Just kidding. <laughs> you actually stayed in Albuquerque a lot longer than that. No, I, I did the I did one stop on the Honoré narrates her audiobook train. Right. Like the, we just pulled into the station, <laughs> had my experience. I narrated the Stop Trying So Hard book, mm -hmm. gave me mad respect for voice talent and producing voice talent because it's a it's a it's next a level, work. next level performance. Um, and then Byron, who is my husband, who has an audio engineering degree actually, mm -hmm. um, is very good friends with a world famous uh, Emmy or I'm sorry, Grammy award-winning producer, and he produced my audiobook. So I kind of had my, you know, my hard work meets my luck. And I ended up with an audiobook that I narrated. And I swore never again. On my on my bucket list was to be a podium author. So podium publishing does audiobooks exclusively, and they are the most well-known, most respected audiobook producer, mostly in the fiction space, although they are branching out into nonfiction, whereas, mm -hmm. which is where I got very lucky in that they have uh, two of my books. So one came out in August, the best-selling book formula, and then they have Write Your First Nonfiction Book, which is coming out 10-10, 10-10-23. Mm -hmm. So next week um, will be the audio for that book. Um, I'm waiting to see if they are going to do the writer's block book. And if not, never say never, because I'm considering narrating it myself. Now, in, in between there, there are now services um, that will charge you a few thousand dollars, several thousand dollars 
to assist you in narrating your own book. And they do all the production and all those things and meet the quality standards. Sure. And then there are also other services that you can delegate the voice work and the production and they will do everything for you. It was interesting though, to have the conversation with my podium rep and just talk to her about voice choices because they understand like I do when I do a book for someone and they're like, oh no, I'm going to write it. It's like, what are you a writer? Well, no, but I like writing. Um, we just know that there's more work that's going to go into the project. So it's very similar with audiobooks. They know that if their talent, their voice talent is not doing the book, if the author is doing the book and the author does not have voice experience, voicing experience, that mm -hmm. there will be more work for them. And sure. they, they don't actually encourage that because they want someone who's professional to put on a performance to do the audiobook. Right. They did say that they thought since a lot of people know my voice and I have a nice following that if I wanted to do the intro and the thank you that that would be cool for a book. Right. And if I want, I really wanted to do the book they wouldn't say no. But ultimately they advise that you allow voice talent to do your book. So interesting um and they have the decision making authority. And they have right. the decision-making authority, as do you. Right. Thank you, Karen. You are always very kind. Checks in the mail. Oh, by the way, where's my check? Just kidding. <laughs> where's my money, man? Where's my money, man? <laughs> um, so um, she knows. She knows I'm joking, but it's fun because it, that's never going to get old. It's never going to get old to revisit that. Um, so uh, there are a lot of things to consider and ultimately it comes down to are you voiceover talent or do you have a pleasing voice? Do you have a budget for voiceover? Do you understand the power of having audiobooks in your catalog and how that can be an entry point into your mm -hmm. ecosystem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are lots of ways to um, to do audiobooks and to think about having audiobooks. Um, bottom line, again, fastest growing segment of publishing because right. so many people have access to Apple CarPlay, right? You get in your car and you have boop, podcast, yeah. boop, audible, boop, audiobooks, right? There's three different ways plus the music. Right. So there's four different ways that you can get access to that content while you're doing something else. And that's the beautiful part about audiobooks and audio content in general is that you can be doing something else and listening. It's mm -hmm. very hard for me. I can't do anything else and read this book. If I'm reading this book, which by the way, nor should you. <laughs> strategy. Yes. I need to be focused. I need I'm to have a highlighter. I need to take notes. It's very important. I, uh, I understand Lucas. I am a student. I'm a student. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. So a lot to consider, but really, yeah great and more and more people are discovering it. Sometimes I'll say to someone, well, do you have an Audible subscription? And they're like, what's Audible? Yeah. And it's just a surprise to me. It's like someone saying, what's the Bible? Right. <laughs> You're like, what? Right? right. Or who's Mickey Mouse? You'd be like, wait, what? Are you, <laughs> are you from this planet? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, there's a couple of things that you said there that um, I've recently experienced kind of a interesting, uh, I guess you could say interesting details. Yeah. Like when you were talking about splitting revenue 50 50 with, uh, or royalties 50 50 with your narrator or whatever the ratio is, because you can, you can propose different ratios to, to the narrator and they can either accept or decline your offer. And if you, you, you have to understand that's, that's 50% or whatever the ratio is of what isn't being taken by the platform, right? So it's yeah. whatever's left after Amazon. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. So with ACX, if you go exclusive with ACX, they give you 40% royalties. So if you split that 50, 50 with your narrator, you're getting 20%, they're getting 20%. And then uh, ACX takes 60. But, but, and some of my author friends are killing it in audio, even yep. having done that. That's yep. how powerful and how fast growing that segment of publishing is and how Absolutely. much people are listening to audio yep. think about think about when we were young lucas when the earth was cooling and <laughs> and the way we listened to things was on vinyl records and then yeah. cassette tapes and yeah. then cds right and so 
did you make a mixtape where you had to like hold it down and wait for the song to come on the radio? I mean, like we've come so far in, Mm -hmm. in that now, if you want to listen to something Mm -hmm. and somebody screwed up, there's some book that's coming out and I went to go pre-order it and it's nowhere. It's like some famous person's book. I was reading a newsletter and I went to look for it and it's not listed on audible. And I'm like, "Uh Oh, somebody's in trouble (laughs) because I can't be the only one. Um, And so think about the fact that even if you do a 20% of your royalty of your audiobook Mm -hmm. and you don't have, you don't get to price it. If you don't go through find away voices, if you go through ACX, they say this type of an audiobook that's this long is this price, the end. And here's your royalty, no soup for you, come back one year. Right. right? So, so even at 20%, some of my author friends are making more than on their other versions of their book combined on yep. all platforms. And yep. so really audiobooks are really important mm-hmm. are a really important Absolutely. component of an author's overall business. Yeah. And again, well, let's review the videotape. Don't do it crappy just so right. you can do it fast. Yeah, right? quality is non-negotiable. You have to have the quality. Yes. yes. Um so so yeah, so there there's there's your ACX option for exclusivity. If you if you're not exclusive, that's 25%. Um total to the to the yeah. writing and publishing team yeah. um so again for a thousand dollars give or take per yep. finished hour it, that's out of pocket so if you're you know two right. two hours five hours seven hours yep. and in the case of that fiction book that i love 20 hours right i'm sure that narrator got paid a lot more than a thousand dollars per finished hour um but ultimately when you think about the potential upside of it and the long-term return on it. If you have evergreen content and you market your books and all the other, you check all the other boxes, it really stands to help you to make more money in the long-term because a lot of people have dyslexia or they don't like reading. Or they're busy. Or they're, and, or they're busy. Or they. For for me, I was commuting three hours a day and having to drive a car for three hours. Like I could not read and drive. right? Right. Right. Um, but I sure could listen. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So. I'm always listening to something. I have just unending content. I It's the, the big lie of my life. The big lie of my life is every day I wake up and say, I'm not buying a book today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Today's the day. No books today. <laughs> Actually got on a Twitter one day and was like, would you guys please stop pricing your books at 99 cents? I yeah, can't stop buying them. Up. Knock it off because I go back and look and go, Oh, I never read that. I still haven't right. read this. I want to read that. Yep. And uh, we only get yeah. more busy. So anyway, and, and I, I also, another lie I tell myself also about books is that uh, when I'm on vacation, I'm going to read the full stack of books on my, Oh, sure. Oh yeah. On my Kindle. Yeah. On my Kindle, on my bedside table, on my desk, like it's all, I'm going to get to all of them. I'm just going to sit and read and drink yeah. tea. And no, it doesn't happen. My last vacation in the summer, I finished Ghost Eaters from um, Clay Chapman, and that was like my one big thing. I was like, I'm going to finish one novel while I'm on vacation. That's it. I can't. I can't do any more than one. Yeah. Um, I tried cracking another anthology while I was at it, but I couldn't. Um, you have to go hide if you're a parent yep. or you have or you run a business or you have any people or animals mm-hmm. right you have to go hide what are you doing nothing <laughs> yeah I'm just sitting here so yeah. so when we talk about going wide or not non-exclusive uh you can publish on acx for your 25 percent commission mm-hmm. rate mm-hmm. Uh, you can also go to find away voices you yeah. have you have mentioned them um yeah. Yeah. You get that wide coverage when you go wide, obviously, meaning you can publish to, you know, if ACX is putting you on iTunes and they're putting you on, on Audible and all the places they go, but then places like Find Away Voices are putting you on places like Spotify, which is trying yeah. to become a, a, a big competitor in the yeah. audiobooks space. Yeah. Spotify just put out a promotion like yesterday where they're like offering free audiobook vouchers for people. There really is a big push to try and get in on that market and take a bite out of um, the ACX landscape. Because I think the last number I saw for ACX is that they're publishing is 63%. They've got like 63% of the market right now. Yeah. Well, somebody at some point would, would come ar- along and, and disrupt or try to disrupt and create a little more right. freedom 
in the in the market for authors. Right. Um, something that a lot of people don't consider and that we have not mentioned is that when you publish on Find Away Voices, you can push your books to Libby, Libby and Overdrive. Right. So that libraries can purchase your book, and you can do that for the for the ebook versions um, through Draft to Digital. You can right. push to libraries, and then they will pay per listen or pay every listen. So you can have a couple of different prices on that. So you just want to do your research on what's standard in your genre, but libraries have money for books. And so if you have free time and you're wondering, what should I do? You can market to libraries. That's right. You can go to the ALA, American Library Association conference in the summer and meet librarians because librarians, I have actually a very good friend of mine is retired Navy and now she's a librarian. And she's always like, tell me when you have a new book because... Mm. I'll get it for the library system. And I'm like, yes. Um, so if you can find a whole bunch of librarians, they are very apt to get your books. You know, when I went to StokerCon in June, first week of June, StokerCon, um, Stoker which Stoker is, is hosted by the Horror Writers Association, for those that are wondering what the heck StokerCon is, um, they had an entire half of their program, like a whole separate track just for librarians. Like that's how big the librarian presence is. Wow. I have no huge. idea. Huge. Huh. I, wonder, I wonder if it'll be like that at 20 books. I don't know. But I, I haven't been since the first year, so I don't know what the structure really is. So right. that'll be interesting they're, to see. They're really supporting the librarians because like you were saying, librarians, this is you know, a testament to your statement that the librarians have such a big impact on the book market. They have money. Yep. They do a lot of fundraising and they want new good content for their readers. Also, if we haven't mentioned it, if you publish a book, take it down and donate it to your local library. There you go. Yeah. Um, nope. I would like to bring up one audiobook tactic that I've learned talking to Zach. Okay. Talking to you. Um, and that is when you have a series, you can sell your audiobook as a series as well. So you mm -hmm. can bundle all the audiobooks. Mm -hmm in that series and sell them for that one credit or, you know, for that one set fee. Yes, you can. And there's a lot of people that are like, oh man, there's four, five, eight, 15 books in that series. And, yeah. you know, they just one at a time, have each book recorded as it's released yep. and sell each audiobook with each book as it's released. And then at the end, couple all of them together and package it and send it off just like you would with the book yep. series. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there are some people that are making a an absolute killing um, on bundled audiobook series sales. Yes, because people will look at, is it worth the price that I paid for my credit? So is it $6, $10, $12 a credit? So they mm -hmm. look at the, well, I always look at the credit, like how much time, what the price is for the book. Do I want to pay for it or do I want to use a credit? Right. Yeah. And people really like it. I like it when it's like 78 hours for one credit winning, exactly. right? Now, of course, like if we really got into the math, what is 78 hours of my time worth? Sure. I want to spend 78 hours listening to something. Right. Is it worth it from a investment of my time perspective? Nevertheless, if, if it feels like a huge value, right. then yes. So like, take, take my one credit. Take my credit, take my yeah. money. Right. That's how we yeah. feel about anything that's valuable, right? It's like when something's right. really valuable, we're like, take my money, take it. How can that's I give right. it to you? What do you mean you won't take it? Yeah. That's all right. Um, if you guys think you have to have like this complex software to record audiobooks, you'd, you'd be mistaken. It really isn't that difficult, but it does help to have a background in some type of recording experience. Um, I couldn't imagine doing it without that. I mean, it would be a little bit of a, a learning process, but I've used uh, GarageBand on my on my Mac to record one of my audiobooks, and Max I'm the win. Yep, the Mac wins on that one. Um, and I actually have like professional recording software for music stuff uh, on my on my Windows PCs, um, but it was just so easy to do with the GarageBand app on on my Mac. So yeah. as long as you have a really good uh, microphone and you understand the quality requirements and you understand how to lay it out. Now I did find a gentleman, I'm going to try and look him up real quick. Um, mm -hmm. while you, while you explain something brilliant, I'll find his oh, name. Um, no pressure. 
but I was I was gonna say that um what was I gonna say, Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> Something brilliant. Say, well, come up with something, something brilliant. brilliant. So I'm like, oh dear. Um, well, <laughs> no, but I, like after your experiences. People, yeah, I was going to say, if people have an audio book, would you please post it in the comments? So that oh yeah, that'd be great. They're there for all time. We would love to have people check out your audio books. And one of the things that I do is I check out um, narrators that I like. I'll check out what other books they've narrated, which is really fun. Um, and I also listen to samples a lot to see if I'm going to like the narrator of a book because it's not just 20 hours in one credit that I'm super psyched about. It's also when the voice is pleasing uh, to listen to. So if you have an audio book, uh, put your link in the chat. I'm going to put this guy's. Oh, good. You found him. Yeah. His name is Rob Dirks, D-I-R-C-K-S. He's an author, copywriter, and designer. And he actually... Hey posted his uh, his garage band settings and you can just download the file and it's got all the settings preset and then you just upload it to, uh, to your garage band and everything's oh. just right where you need it oh that's awesome that yeah. sounds fantastic so i'll put his uh his link here in the comments awesome um okay um i have a question for you miss honore yes when it comes to, uh, so like I did the auditioning for my fiction book, I, I posted a sample of my uh, script, right? It's a, a segment of my book. Yep. Um, I was pretty strategic in my script selection. Okay. I, I knew that my narrator was going to have to be a female that could voice both male and female characters. Mm-hmm. There's only one male character in that story that needed to be voiced outside of one minor character in the beginning. Um, but there were two female voices, one's young, one's old. So I, I put a, quite a challenge up in front of a narrator. Can you do a male's voice, a 40-something-year-old right. mom, and a 12-year-old daughter, and oh, by the way, also a male minister? And um, here's a very like suspenseful, action-packed segment, and then here's a kind of less exciting segment, segment. <clears throat> and then here's one that like really needs to be treated with some with some pacing and reverence kind of deal right yeah and boy was i glad i mixed that script up because i had some fantastic voices come through the narrator yeah. like but the way they read it was the deciding factor mm -hmm. people that like really like the 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 script resonated with them and they they understood storytelling uh-huh it just stood out like crazy. So yeah. we narrowed down what was probably 30 or 50, like between 30 and 50 narrators in, wow. and I'm not even kidding guys, in three days, I had almost 50 auditions yeah. in ACX. Yeah, people are really hungry for voice work. Um, and I would say out of the 50, 40 of them were top notch. And we were able to narrow it down to like three to five based off of, wow. you know, just the professionalism of the recording. But here's some some lessons I learned this last week doing this. Make sure you put in there that one of your priorities is the quality of the recording. I got a lot of feedback from people like, hey, I have a professional studio. This is the way I do this. I've done this before. Only because I said it's a mandatory requirement. It's going to be part of the selection process. Yep. Second part was um, if you want them to have an accent or not, you need to indicate it. If you want them to have um, a certain style of reading, you need to indicate that. I would do all of that mm -hmm. beforehand yep. and not just expect it to come through because there were some people that auditioned and they were like, here's three versions of the story. Here's one with a Southern accent. Here's one without it. And here's one with a really intense kind of feel. And I'm like, wow, you're giving me three different auditions from one person with these very different approaches. As the author, you have something in your mind already for how it went down yeah. Yeah. in your mind, which is why a lot of authors who have their um, uh, books produced into movies get really upset with the adaptation because it's like, that's not what I had in mind. And that's really frustrating. Yeah. Bye, Wayne. Nice to see you. We'll see you next time. He gave me the go dolphins. They're going to play the giants. They're going to destroy the giants this week is what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going right, to be bad. Easy. Gonna, Everybody calm down. It's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> Everybody calm down. Yeah. Uh, right. um, anyway. So anyway, um, 
we already have a, an idea in mind of what the character is like. In fact, when I'm writing fiction, I go and I find the actress that I would like to play it in the movie or the TV series. So I'm, because I've figured out what the character looks like in my mind, what they sound like in my mind. So a narrator has to almost guess unless you give them some insight. No, it's totally true. Um, and it was helpful to kind of take the time to do that because I've been with someone that rushed through the process. Like they were- No. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever does that, Lucas. Like I was with someone as they were putting their stuff in the system mm -hmm. and they were just like, like just going really quick. And I'm like, 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 you know, take a second, make sure you put some in. Because having been someone that's recorded music before and been hired to record music for for people it's like there's mm -hmm. a lot i had a lot of questions you have about like of course right so you know you've got someone like stevie ray vaughn was hired to record for david bowie and stevie ray vaughn was a blues player and he's a very distinct sound and bowie's like i want your sound on my album but you know they had to have conversations about like okay i'm gonna play this solo do you want me to just do my thing or do you have something in mind that's right yeah Right. And, and wow. these narrators are no different. I mean, right. most of the people I talk to are professional voiceover yeah. and they have a way of doing things and yep. they're, they're curious about what you want, but they're, they're definitely in charge. Yes, <laughs> so. for sure. And you will listen to them and you will pay them and you will be happy about it. Now I did opt to, uh, to, to pay by the finished hour, um, okay. because I didn't want to, um, I just wanted to be able to pay for services and be done. Right and yep. not have to worry about all the things. Um, and um, I was wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit. I've obviously, I'm just cracking into this little world, um, but you've actually, you have a you have a professional agreement with Podium on, on some of your publications. Yep. So can you talk just briefly about like, what is after the production, what is it like working with a, a like audiobook publisher? Well, it's like a dream. Honestly, they are the they are pros. And so they've said, yes, we're acquiring. Here's the paper. Here's the, you know, here's what we're offering. Here's the paper. Here's the agreement. That's all signed, which is the proper way to do business anyway. What the expectations were. Um, and then they said, you know, here are the narrators. We think that would voice your project the best. Please listen to them and pick. Um, if you don't like any of them, let us know and we'll send you some more. And I, I understood that they're the, they're the pros. And so I should, even if I, I didn't initially think, well, these were the most amazing voices ever. Of course they're not, they don't sound like I sound. So of course they're not going to sound in my head, like I sound in my head writing the book. So I had to separate that and just say, how will the book be con be consumed by the reader in the, in the best voice according to me. And they gave me three solid choices. And I chose one, Carolyn Jania. And then the next thing I knew, I had assets. So I had the coming soon banners, the now available banners, right? Lots of different assets that they sent me. And they said, you know, here's a marketing guide for you, which I thought was very interesting. Like here are different things you can do to That's market awesome. your audiobook. Yeah. So they were very, they're very on top of it. And for both books, they've done the same thing. They've said, you know, here's what we're doing. Here's what we'd like you to do. Here are some suggestions. Here are your assets. And that's really beautiful, right? It's given me, it, it's kind of validated me in a way because I do the same thing for my authors. And so it was nice to see that the, that excellence in their area, they're doing things that I have been intuitively doing for my authors as well. So I, mm -hmm. you know, I did a little hair flip and was happy. <laughs> Go me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the, the downside, there's only one downside, and I don't know that it's a downside yet, is that I have no line of sight to anything. So I have no idea if my book, or my first book, because it's the only one that's out so far, setting the world on fire, or if I've sold three copies. I just don't right. know. I haven't gotten a report. The, the reporting is a, a long time in, in arrears. So we'll, that remains to be seen. But as far as um, top-notch professionals, ease of use, um, professional quality on the finished product, all check, check, check. Absolutely delightful. All loaded in the systems, all the agreements oh, are... I didn't have to do any of that. So you, you, of that. 
so rather than you know because or and, and the reason i brought this up is because you know for for a good bit of the discussion we've talked about what you have to do between you and a hosting agent right like yeah. acx or find away voices yeah. or whatever yeah. but when you have a publisher like podium for example they're doing all of that for you so they're mm -hmm. the ones in agreements yeah. with audible mm -hmm. they're the yep. ones in agreements with so your agreement with them is structured around your particular publication yep, yep. and the revenue share or royalty yep. share and all that stuff right yep. yep just like a regular publication that's right just like regular traditional publishing awesome yeah and how how helpful is the marketing kit i mean that's got to be pretty cool i mean yeah i mean it's very it was if i didn't know anything it would have been very helpful right because i know some things i was like yes this is all good information and a reminder and i got out my calendar and i did what they suggested and i i checked all the boxes because i want to be you know the the most successful and easiest to work with that I can possibly be, right? I'm joining my brand with their brand. And so I want them to feel like this was a good decision on their part. Right. Yeah. So I want them to not regret because there are a couple of different things, right? You marry your brand with somebody and you have to hold your nose to do it. And you go, well, hopefully it's going to work out. Right. Hopefully they don't screw it up or wish we hadn't done that. Let's untangle those sorts of things, right? Or you can say, wow, this is a really good decision. Let's make it again. Right. Let's do it. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And again. Yeah. And again. Well, yeah. Oh, there. Look at that. There's Renee. 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 Guys have any questions for, for us about uh, audiobooks or all the things? This is, I think, the second. Seconds. Yeah, we've got a couple In seconds left. Seconds. <clears throat> we've had, uh, we've had uh, two episodes now, uh, lives about audiobooks since we um, came back from the summer and we really just really want to motivate you guys to to pursue this because it is such an expanding market um yeah it's just wildly valuable it, it became a primary part of my book strategy like it's not even negotiable as, soon as you realize goodness this is a real thing yeah wow. yep and there's people making just as much or more off of their audiobooks um than they are off the print and ebooks combined yep, yep. Well, awesomeness. Um, Honoré, do you have anything you want to share with us before next next week? No, I think next week we should talk about the, the launch of my audios with Podium. Maybe there we'll you go. About, yeah. Because we'll do, you have, do you have a new one coming up? I do on 1010. Write your first nonfiction book comes out exclusively on Audi Audible on 1010. Most excellent. And next week is 1012. That's right. Our, our live, so we'll talk about it. Thanks, Thank Tony. You. We feel the same about you. That's right, buddy. We appreciate you, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. If you um, if you have any questions for us, you guys know how to reach out to us. We're broadcasting here every week on YouTube, Facebook, and on LinkedIn. Um, don't forget to go check out our podcast on all the different platforms. We host exclusively on, or not exclusively, but primarily on Spotify, oh. and then it goes out to all the other places. So you can find us on Apple and all the, all the fun, all the fun places. All um, and we will see you guys next week. So thanks for joining us. Yes. Thanks, everybody.